Welcome, my sons and fellow acolytes. I am here to show you the path. We have been given weapons and armor that may deliver us to salvation from the parasites. I introduce you to the living weapons. Firstly, the living axe, dealing 11 damage and applying corrosion to the... Wait, the parasites don't even wear armor. Why would it do that? Ahem. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on to the next weapon. The living cleaver, which also does 11 damage, while also inflicting the holy effect of viral, uh, but only viral for... Viral 1 for, for 5 seconds. Why? And it doesn't stack. God, please tell me there are better weapons than this. Next up is the Living Scythe. It does 10 damage and has a large area of effect. It can even hit behind you. That one didn't even have a status effect. What the fuck is going on? Turn off that damn music. What is happening here? Or it is next. It does 11 damage and when hitting a parasite it can inflict bleeding onto them. Hey, that's actually not that bad, but wait, 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 only level one for five seconds, oh. And it also doesn't stack, oh well, fucking shit, ain't that great. Alright, please god, this is the last weapon that you don't need creative mode for, that is available to us common folk. Let this one be a good one. Now, again, this is our only ranged weapon, the living bow. And it says on the wiki it only does one damage, which is true if you don't charge it up. However, after charging it up for 15 seconds, it does an astounding 27 damage. How much health do those parasites have again? The answer is yes to that question. Now, onto the sentient weaponry. Don't worry, you cannot obtain these at all and they will not save you from the parasites. However, they are still a few tiers higher than the regular living variety of weapons. First off, we have the Sentient Great Axe. It is said to be an evolution of the Living One, and has gained a mind of its own, gaining the ability to render armor useless. This thing does a whopping 21 damage and applies Corrosion too. Which, as far as we know, is as useful as Corrosion 1 against Parasites. It is a rather good weapon for killing other players in good armor, though. Now onto the Sentient Great Cleaver. This weapon does 21 damage and inflicts Viral 2. Looks like we're actually getting somewhere. And on top of that, it actually stacks this time around, so it may actually be able to kill one of the later game Parasites instead of just tickling its taint. Though it seems that Parasites can still adapt to these weapons, unfortunately. So it doesn't matter if you do Viral 15, if you're just gonna do one damage to it. Okay, let's see here, what do we have next? Ah yes, the Sentient Great Scythe. I mean, it has 17 damage, and it somehow needed to gain sentience to be able to hit a few blocks further away. Don't ask me how that works, it just does, ask Todd Howard. It can now hit 13 blocks horizontal and 7 blocks vertical, and even 7 blocks behind you, I guess. If you get jumped at all sides, it might be uh, somewhat useful. The Sentient Greatsword is up next. Gaining a genius intellect also honed its blade, letting it now inflict bleeding too while doing 21 damage. I also just want to note, Again, that bleeding is only half as effective as it could be if the enemy doesn't move. This means that this weapon should never be used when fighting dispatchers or beckons. And last, but definitely least, the sentient great bow. Nothing. It does the exact same shit as the living bow. Okay, get your tinfoil cup and get ready to step up on the batter's plate. We're going over living and sentient armor. Actually, wait, why the fuck are we even talking about this? You can't even craft either set. J just roll with it, man. Fuck it, it exists, so we're going to cover it. What are you, W, man? Now, living armor steps up to the plate. Being negligibly better than diamond armor protecting you from the horrors of the parasite-infested wasteland. It offers an additional 5 armor and 4 toughness, and boasts incredible durability. 
from the high 10,000s to the low 20,000s in terms of durability. It only has one ability, granting the user the Parasite's ultimate skill, Adaptation. This can allow the player to adapt to a total of four damage types. You'll still get one shot. It doesn't matter. Moving on. Alright, moving on to the sentient armor, you get a maximum protection of 29 with a toughness of 17. Don't worry, this set of armor has all the benefits, such as unchanged durability compared to the last one, along with having three additional types of damage that the player can adapt to, shooting them up to seven damage types. Note that this ability is only useful when you have Keep Inventory on, because the Parasites will murder you and eat your armor. These two items are a must-have for every adventurer's sack. First up, we have the Quench. It's a warm and malleable substance made of magma cream and a bit of blaze powder sprinkled in. When throwing it at infested blocks, it will purify the Parasite's territory in a radius of 15 by 15 blocks. This is all just for the low, low cost of four blaze rods and one magma cream. Oh, and don't forget, the area can be reinfected instantly at any time by anything that spreads infestation. Now maybe, if you make a blaze farm, you'll have enough blaze rods to help clear out an entire biome. To the other make or break artifact that shall save you from this mod, the Bloody Clock. It is able to tell you what evolution phase you're in. Not that you can do anything about it. It's just a clock telling you how fucked you are. Oh, and by the way, the phases are negative two to eight. I guess that might help you in some way. Now onto the compass from when you're running into the parasite biome trying to traverse through the fog and find the core. Dodging parasites before one eventually grabs you, rips out your lower intestines, and with your dying breath, you look at the compass. You're right there. The note is right there taunting you straight into the grave. Freshly nerfed and ready to go. So how the previous ones worked is you use parasite parts to make lures of different tiers. Each tier would reduce the evolution point pool by a certain amount. Each of the lures were made from different parasite drops. The lower tiers using some of the weakest stuff, such as Ruptor Viscera, and the strongest tiers using stuff as essential segments. However, our Lord and Savior, the creator of this mod, decided to horribly nerf this item into the ground. So if you use a lure by itself now, all it will do is pause the timer in which the parasites will get points. If you would like to reduce the points besides killing parasites, you will have to make something called a carcass. A carcass is five blocks of the same tier arranged in a seven by seven square. For instance, if you use the tier one lure, it will pause it by seconds. If you make a tier one carcass, it will reduce the parasites by 10 points, which is not even a drop in the bucket at that point. That's a fucking cork in the bucket or some shit. Now the highest tier lure pauses the parasite's progression for 20 minutes. Now if you want to get the top tier lure, this requires you to destroy sacks in the parasite bond with only a 5% drop chance while dodging all the hardest enemies in the game. You can reduce the parasite's points by 6,225,000 points if you make a top tier carcass. Cool, right? But they still thought this was far too easy because the dev decided that the carcass should have a scent value. This brings us on to our next topic, the scent system. Oh, and before that, there is one more thing worth noting. Between phases negative one and three, when a ruptor gets five kills or more, it will place down a tunnel block. These blocks will regularly spawn buglins. Now, what the scent system is is essentially a spawning slash invasion system. When killing a mob from phase 3 onwards, there's a chance they'll spawn an invisible scent entity. On top of being invisible, they're also intangible, and can only be killed via commands. Whenever a parasite dies nearby, a scent will teleport to the nearby attacker of said parasite. 
If there's not enough parasites, worms will spawn. When worms spawn, they will grab parasites from a list of available parasites depending on the scent level. Killing parasites will add danger and reaction points and increase the scent's lifespan. Danger points will increase the scent's level and reaction points will determine when the scent will teleport and summon parasites. This brings us back to lures and carcasses for a moment. Scents will be manually summoned when using any type of carcass, and the heed will also summon low-level scents. The scent levels are levels 1 through 8. There is a minimum and maximum amount of waves that will spawn, and there is a minimum and maximum amount of mobs that will spawn per wave. We don't want to waste your time with every scent level in the game, so we'll just cover 1 and 8. Scent level 1 requires 10 danger points, it will spawn 1 to 3 waves, and will spawn 4 to 6 parasites per wave. Each wave only has ruptures at this level. Isn't that nice? Use a level 1 carcass to try and lower the points early game, and then 6 ruptures just decide to appear right next to you. You then kill them all if you're lucky, and what happens? Another wave spawns, and then there are more scents, making a beautiful, infinite feedback loop. You should start running at this point. Now on the top end, we have scent level 8. You need 500 danger points, and it spawns between 2 and 5 waves, and have 2 and 5 mobs per wave. The spawn pool consists of assimilated primitives, the heed, and the crux. Do remember the heed itself also spawns sense. Now we'll go over the inner workings of the sense system. It works in three types of variables, tasks, values, and modes. Values being danger for when you kill a parasite within the sense range. And reaction when a parasite dies within range, it will trigger a wave. When there's tasks, task A, the scent will check the reaction value. If it reaches the threshold when it's met, it'll go into tactical mode. Task B, if a parasite mob is within range, the reaction value will increase, aka fuck your sheep farm. Task C, the scent will check the reaction value to see if it reaches the threshold. It'll go into attacker mode. When in attacker mode, if the target is still alive, the reaction value will increase. And task D, the scent will relocate any nearby parasites if available. If none are available, it goes into builder mode, aka I'm going to spawn shit mode. Then it will immediately go back into tactical mode. And task E, the scent will try to spawn more scents at a nearby target. Spawn sense will immediately be an aggressive. Task F. It will spawn mobs from a list and then finally die. Listener mode will only work in task A. Observer mode will only work in task A and B. Tactical mode will work in task C. Attacker mode will work in task D. Builder mode will work in task E. Aggressive mode will work in task F. In short, do not stand and fight. Kill what you must and get the fuck out. So, parasites and the way this whole biomass takeover thing works is they need to obtain points. They can obtain points in many ways. Killing mobs, simulating mobs, little asshole mouths, eating items, and even infesting blocks. Eventually, upon getting enough points, they will start going up phases. Now, for the overworld, we start at phase zero, which is when buglins start naturally spawning and slowly grow into ruptures. And of course, ruptures will attack mobs if they are in a group of two or more. Sleeping will also add three points to this page. Places like the end and the nether start at phase negative one, making it so unless under specific conditions, such as a parasite crawling through either portal or progressing to high enough stages in the overworld, parasites cannot enter either dimension. Now on to phase one. To get to phase one requires 400 evolution points which only takes 67 mobs getting assimilated to reach. Ruptors can naturally spawn on phase one outright, and sleeping now adds 40 points to the progression. Phase two comes at 800 evolution points. Another 67 mobs. This allows assimilated mobs to now naturally spawn and give ruptors the ball stream. They will now attack you regardless of if they're alone or not. Phase 3 comes in needing another 1,000 points. 
And this phase unlocks the reinforcement and collective consciousness systems. This spawns Sage One Beckons. The reinforcement system can also apparently, according to the wiki, spawn a maximum of 100 Beckons with a 5 second cooldown. There are several ways to activate the reinforcement system. These include killing a parasite, residue hitting the ground, and infested blocks. The chances of all these things happening and spawning a Beckon go up depending on the phase. At minimum, it is a 2% chance, and at maximum, it's a 9% chance. Now, a 9% chance may not sound like much. That is until you realize that it's a 9% chance for every single mob death piece of residue hitting the floor and block getting infested. Now there is a second part to the reinforcement system, that being that Beckons will have a chance to spawn every tick. For phase 4, it's 1 out of every 4,000 ticks will spawn a Beckon somewhere around you. If you're on phase 8, it's 1 in every 300. If you turn the evolution phase off, it's 1 in every 20,000 ticks. Now, back to phase 3. There is now a passive point gaining system. Each second, every parasite's kill count will go up by 0.05. So every creature that depends on a kill count, they will slowly come up. Mobs with Call of the Hive will now also not drop any loot. And sleeping will cause the point pool to go up by a thousand points. Moving up to phase 4, this phase requires 20,000 points to begin. Primitive parasites and thralls will now passively spawn. And all fish are dead now. Throw away your fishing rod, you can't get shit. Beckons will now also slowly grow to phase 3. And the passive kill count will go up to 0.075 now. And lastly, sleeping will now add 10,000 points. Next up, we got Phase 5. 200,000 points required for this bad boy. Nodes can now spawn during this phase. Feral parasites have joined in. Assimilated mobs will now drop their disguises when you're nearby. Beckons now have lost all fucks given for summoning cooldowns and will now slowly grow to Stage 4. The passive kill count points will now go up at a rate of 0.1 per second. Just keep in mind that this means a host can turn into a herd passively in a fairly quick amount of time for its size. Now wait. Wait, this can't be right. What the fuck is this? Give me that. Wait. Oh god. <clears throat> okay, so sleeping now just quintuples the parasites, the evolution phase points. After four nights of sleeping, you'll be at... 21 million points. Okay, whatever. We're just gonna ignore that for now. Phase 6 is up next and requiring 5 million points or just 3 nights of sleep. Adapted parasites and manglers will now naturally spawn. Call of the Hive will now turn mobs into feral instead of assimilated mobs. All mobs in the game now have a 20% chance just to spawn with Call of the Hive, and crops will now grow 10% slower. Assimilated mobs and ruptors will now stop naturally spawning, opening up the spawn pools for harder mobs to appear more often. Sleeping will now add an additional one and a quarter million points. Now moving on to phase seven. If you ever reach this phase, you are most likely lost. The parasites have won and are now just salting the earth. Parasites will spawn in the daylight. Grunts and monarchs will now naturally spawn. And all parasites will now attack all non-parasite mobs on site. Additionally, all mobs will now have a 40% chance to spawn with Call of the Hive. And crops will go 30% slower. Sleeping now gives 25 million points to Gryffindor. Hey Zay, I mean you're not even playing the game anymore, this is just what the parasites do while you're gone since you've logged off long ago. Anyways, mobs spawn with a 60% chance of infection, 
crops glow 60% slower. We love that. Sleeping will now only add one point to soothe your wounds. Don't worry though, the parasites have a limit on how many points they can have per dimension. A measly two billion with a B. No biggie. Okay, so adaptation is basically the you hit me once. It won't work a second time, but applied to every single grunt in the game. Imagine you're playing Mario Brothers and you stomp on a Goomba. You then die by falling into the void. You boot the level back up and stomp on that same Goomba, but little did you know he adapted. He now has the Taint Destroyer 9000 and is still alive. He then proceeds to vaporize your balls. Essentially, every time a parasite with adaptation is hit, there is a chance it will adapt to damage. They can adapt to any damage except for possibly suffocation and falling into the void. They can also adapt to fire damage, but still receive its negative effects for some reason. This mechanic is even able to adapt to modded damage types, making Parasite survive things such as missiles, RPGs, literal tank rounds, black holes, Satan, God, you name it. Now, you can see the Parasite using this ability when it starts flashing colors that are not red. Green means it's still vulnerable to damage from that type, and purple means you're doing fuck all. There are a few ways to neutralize this effect, such as cutting off a tendril, but doing this is a double-edged sword because it also applies rage. And a small amount of bleeding, so now they hit harder. It of course only works on a small few of them that have tendrils in the first place. This can also be negated with the Amalleable effect. Wait, wait, I'm getting reports from our our news, our news reporters. There's a new status effect in the game that correlates to the armor and weapons that are still not in the game. When you are wearing or wielding sentient equipment, you will now have the status effect Prey, and this will spawn a permanent level one scent as long as you are wearing or wielding this equipment. It never goes away. Now let's talk about fire real quick. When on fire, a parasite can fail to adapt to a source of damage. Two things are this window for failure only lasts 10 ticks, which is just half a second, and the chance of failure is not 100%. The rates range from 30 to 70% chance to fail. When not burning, depending on the parasite type, each parasite will have between 70 and 100% chance to learn from damaged sources. On top of that, parasites can learn between 5 and 20 sources of damage, depending on type. Our little bite-sized snack, the Buglins, with enough time will grow into a Rupter. Rupters, after they get 30 kills, can evolve into Manglers. Manglers and Rupters will attack any non-parasite mob, or stand next to them to spread Call of the Hive. This turns their target into either an incomplete form, or an assimilated variant depending on potency. Quote unquote sane mobs will turn into feral parasites if they have Call of the Hive 3, when the evolution phase is 5 or above. Most assimilated parasites have a chance to drop walking heads when they die. Medium incomplete forms can merge with walking heads turning into assimilated versions. Assimilated mobs can disguise themselves and will passively spread Call the Hive. When spreading, they are most likely to evolve into any of these few branches. By killing five aggressive mobs when they were... When there are three assimilated mobs nearby, they will melt into moving flesh and merge into any of the available primitive parasites. Assimilated parasites will evolve into feral parasites once they reach 60 kills, if they do not melt into moving flesh before then. Primitive parasites after killing 10 aggressive mobs can adapt into adapted parasites, and they'll be struck by purely cosmetic lightning when evolving. Lastly, Nexus Parasites will just naturally spawn. Parasite Biomes can only be created by a node. These will be spawned after a beckon reaches stage 4 fog when within the effect rage of the node. 
The node itself is a structure that permits the rapid expansion of the parasite biome, turning all blocks into parasite biome blocks over time. Nodes have three distinct levels, which change their visual appearance and statistics. It's a red mass of colored blocks that act as a protection to the hive core to stop a parasite biome from ex Now about node levels. Depending on the level of all nodes in the world added together, parasites will spawn with certain effects. At level 3, parasites will spawn with speed 2. At level 4, they will spawn with fire resistance 1. And at level 7, they will spawn with invisibility 1. We love that, don't we? As node statistics, we have all three levels here, and I will list them from level 1 to level 3 for each group. And the first one is Crop Failure Growth. The failure growth goes from 30, 60, and then 100% at max level. We are going full USSR here. No farming for you, my comrade. Now on to the effect range. It goes from 400 blocks, 1600 blocks, and then 8000 blocks. You can be in another time zone and the node will still have speed 2 invisible ability 1 manglers spawning on top of you. Spread range of the parasite biome starts at a mini 200 blocks, evolves to 800, and then finishes off at 4000. Now at the very bottom of the list, we have how fast the parasite biome grows. Stage 1, it'll take about 8 days. Stage 2, it'll take about another 10 days to grow. And stage 3 will take 40 full days to grow. Oh, and one last thing on the wiki we'd like to note is the fact that regeneration penalty does not apply to golems. As if it matters anyway. Well, that was an amazing adventure. I am sure glad it happened entirely off camera. We successfully escaped the endless room with the invincible golem and got to continue with our lives as free men and safe men that always abide by the law. Unless I get cut off while driving to 7-Eleven, then I swear to God, the store clerk will get a frozen monster slammed against the side of their head. Oh, hey, what's this letter on the ground? Let me just open this up real quick. Sorry fuckers, you're doing a bonus episode about parasites in thigh highs? Okay, what kind of reddit moderator manatee would have written some shit like this? Oh, wait, it says who wrote it. With best regards, Pedo Bear. <laughs>